Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made these little earrings and I also redid the buttons on one of my cool vintage coats to make it a little bit more fancy. And I am so excited about this because I found these really cool vintage Chanel buttons online and I found a way to repurpose them into something cool. I remember when I was like 12, which is ridiculous, but I wanted a pair of the classic little Chanel studded earrings so bad, but obviously I was 12 years old and that's ridiculous. But I've been inspired because lately I've noticed a lot of people wearing them on Instagram and in YouTube videos and stuff. So I've been on the hunt a little bit. I was trying to find a pair possibly through like a resale site or like a vintage pair or something, but I wasn't really having much luck because first of all, they're expensive. They're like $400. And the vintage ones that I was finding were not much cheaper than what you would just buy if you went to the store. So I didn't really feel like it was worth the money. Um, First of all, because of the massive price hikes that we've seen from Chanel over the last few years. When I was 12, I think they were $200. So they've doubled in price over the last 10 years. And then also because I know that people have quality issues with their costume jewelry, it isn't like real diamonds or anything and the, the stones aren't actually set into the earring. So they fall out a lot, I've heard. and. Paying $400 for something that's constantly going to be breaking. I know they fix it for free, but you have to send it in. It's a whole long process and it just didn't seem worth it to me. So I decided why not make my own? So I took myself over to Etsy and I just searched old Chanel buttons and I found this pair from this woman. She claims they're from the 80s, which if they are, that's super cool. But if they're not, I think I got them for like $15. So it doesn't really bother me authenticity wise and... I don't know, they seem to be made really well and the backings are metal, so it seems like a quality button regardless. So I'm gonna show you how I made these step by step and show you the final result. You will need sandpaper, earring backs, this cutter thing from a toolkit, I borrowed it from my boyfriend, buttons, and craft glue. I know a lot of people use E6000 glue for jewelry, but as my finger was hovering over the purchase button, I realized that there's a lot of yucky, toxic stuff in it, so I went with this non-toxic option that I found at Joanne instead, but just use whatever you feel comfortable with. My first challenge was getting the backs off of the buttons so that they were flat enough that I could attach the earring backs. I used the cutter to snip off the metal, and then I worked to sand down the back until it was flat. This was kind of hard and I kind of hurt my fingers a little bit doing it. There's probably like a better way that I could have done this, but a little bit of an amateur jewelry maker over here, so this is what I did. After I got the backs flat, it was time to start gluing. I put down a kitchen towel on my coffee table just so I didn't get glue everywhere. I'm using these sterling silverbacks that I also found at Joanne, and I think they're really nice and shiny and they will look good with the earrings. And then all I did from here was put a little bit of glue on the back of the earring and stick it to the button. let them dry overnight and here is the final result. I think they look so beautiful. I'm super excited to wear them and that I kind of hacked it and did it for less. I think I spent probably a total of $25 making these which versus a huge $400 to $1,000 price tag on normal Chanel costume jewelry is a total steal and it was also really nice that I could repurpose something old and turn it into something new that can be worn again. I don't know what the original plan for these buttons were, but it's possible that they were just sitting in someone's drawer and even though they're really beautiful, they weren't getting used. So I hope you feel inspired and if there's any like special buttons that you have lying around that you love but you haven't really known what to do with, I think this is a super great way to use them and make it into something that you can wear every day. Next, I'm gonna share the jacket. So I wasn't originally planning to put new buttons on this coat, 
but I was inspired during my search for buttons that I could turn into earrings because I found this pair that matched the colors of my jacket perfectly and I thought what a cool way to turn a piece that I got. I think my jacket was like $20 from a vintage sale and it'd be really cool to turn it into something even more unique and kind of dress it up a little bit because it is a really nice wool coat and I like to wear it out to dinner and I just I like having super unique pieces. So this was a DIY way that I could elevate my cool wool coat. So I'll show you how I did it. It was very easy and you could do this with any jacket that you have laying around. Like if it's something even that you're just growing tired of and you want to mix it up a little bit, this is a good way to just do a minor change without a ton of work. My second project involves a super beautiful wool coat that I thrifted back in the summer when it was like 90 degrees outside. I tried it on at this weird garage sale and it was so sweaty, but I bought it anyway knowing I'd love it in the winter. I am going to start by using a seam ripper on the buttons and I'm going to take them off because I'm switching them out for these really beautiful vintage Chanel buttons that I also found on Etsy. I just think it'll give my coat a nice little facelift and make it even more unique than it already is. When I took off the original buttons, I left behind excess pieces of thread just so that I could clearly mark where to put the replacement buttons. I then started sewing the new buttons on. These are a different style of button than what was originally on my coat, so they required a little bit of a different stitch, but I actually felt that that was actually easier to secure them to the coat than I thought. I then repeated the same process for the other three buttons and came out with my finished piece. It was really easy and I love the way that it looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.